Alabama practice number five is in the books, and we're going to talk about what the team looked like and this defense, which has some secret weapons, according to Tim Keene in the third. So we're going to get into that and more. First, though, thank you for hanging out with us here on the Bama Tailgate YouTube channel. Like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up, and let's get this thing started with a, and I mean this, you guys know, a Roll Tide. Look who's back, big sexy Elmo in the house. What's up, dude? How's things going, Mick? Feel like I haven't seen you in months. Oh, really? It's just been a day. Oh, it, it feels like that. When you're it a tag team partner, like do you think that Hawk and Animal went a day without talking? Well, no, that's true. That, that that's just very true. I, I went incognito for a day. <laughs> that and busy for, time, uh, busy time, busy time. The uh, yeah. The the Road Warriors, of course, uh, wrestling yeah. talk. Uh, uh, a better right tag team, the Road Warriors or the Steiner Brothers? Road Warriors were the best ever. Okay. I like the Steiner Brothers too, but the Road Warriors are the best ever. All right, practice five in the books. And I want to throw this at you right here, right off the bat. And uh, it's Tim Keenan the third. I love this comment by him. Spoke to the media after practice. And he's going to tell you, about this team um as far as they i i think we're gonna be you know very we're gonna be very fresh for the game as far as how guys can rotate and we got so many you know secret weapons you got guys who can pass rush you got guys who can stop and run and you got guys who can stop and run as pass rush so we pretty much got a whole arsenal all right brett uh secret weapons bang bang here we go after after uh, practice number five, uh, got those secret weapons that we're talking about now. And I, I've been hearing a lot of really good things <coughs> on the uh, practice reports about this defense, and especially the defensive line. Uh, they've been giving the defensive line a lot of praise the past uh, two practices. Uh, also heard um, a lot of really high praise about Jalen Milrow um, yesterday and I think uh, Coach DeBoer said that uh, he took a, a huge step forward and uh, really likes how he, he's playing and taking command, and and uh, that's a good sign early in camp. Yeah, no doubt. Well, the, the defense is different. Kane Womack brings a four-two-five scheme to Alabama, different than Nick Saban, and yeah. one of the positions on the field, the outside linebacker position, is known as the wolf position, right? And – uh, and it's because you got to kind of do a little bit of everything. Rush the passer. Uh, you cover a little bit. You know, you try. You're trying to make plays and uh, passing and uh, and the run game. It's it's a really important position. And I like what he had to say. Well, you know, when he's talking secret weapons, um, Tim Keenan. I think one of the guys he's talking about is Quay Russo. Um, I think uh, I think Quay has taken such a leap from playing, you know, high out of school, high school he played, he played the inside, inside linebacker, linebacker position to now, you know, playing the outside linebacker position in a new system this spring. I think he's made a huge jump in just the confidence level that he's playing with right now. And so when you look at him, you know, I just think he's starting to produce and make a lot more plays because he has confidence in what he's doing um, physically. I mean, you know, we, 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 we use the term freak around here, right. Uh, uh, but, when, when you talk about him, I mean, that guy is, is truly freaky in terms of his strength and athleticism and speed. Um, and so, you know, he is starting to play with that confidence that, that we need out of that position. You know, I feel like the defense is the area where I'm most concerned. I, I, I know exactly what you're saying about Milrow. This is going to be Milrow's offense. It already is. He put the time in last year, got to the college football playoff. I love the fact that the guy is motivated to prove people wrong. He, his engine is high. His motivation is high. It's a great guy. Defense, though, they didn't look great in, at the, in the first half of the 8A game. Um, 
you know, I, I put T Rob up there with maybe one of the reasons why all those players left, you know, he went to Georgia and it almost felt like maybe, you know, who knows what happened behind the scenes, but it just kind of felt like maybe some of that was nudged by him who would have been Alabama's defensive coordinator instead of Womack had he just waited until the coaching staff got in place, you know? So anyway, Alabama lost a bunch of guys and they lost them all over the place. And I'm, just curious to see how this defense is is going to look, you know. And so when when we talk about Quay Russo, um, you know, you talk about Keanu Colt, you know, guys like that trying to slide into that outside linebacker wolf position spot. I, I love the combination of that with Deontay Lawson and Jaheed Campbell and Justin Jefferson in the you know on the other side on the inside linebacker spot. But I feel like what first off, Tim Keenan, I thought Brett did a great job in his doing his interview. I mean, I, I like yeah. very likable guy, like <laughs> good talker, smooth, seems like a like a likable dude that's really motivated. But I also like hearing that these these guys, because it's not Dallas Turner anymore, are stepping up and, and starting to turn heads. Well, the Quay, you know, um, he's a what a red shirt sophomore. All right, so I redshirt freshman, um, I believe. And, um, you know, he was one of the state's top uh, recruits uh, when we snagged him uh, out of Carver. Uh, but, you know, maybe this is one of the secret weapons that, uh, you know, they're talking about because he didn't see any play in action last year. Um, and this guy has taken up that role, you know, um, and, and you know, you know, maybe hungry like the wolf, you know, at that wolf position. Well, Keon Keeley's another guy, uh, you know, that a former five star that I think is going to be someone that they're going to look to a lot. Another secret weapon type guy, Yonze Pierre. You keep hearing his name in practice. Yeah, you do. Uh, Jamarian Latham. I mean, you're you're hearing these guys, um, but you know, Pierre and and Russo are the guys that you're hearing the most out of. I think that I, I really do. I believe what Keenan is saying. I, I think that there's going to be these guys that didn't get to play last year a lot because of, you know, being behind people like Dallas Turner sure. or, or guys that graduated or whatever. I mean, think about it. No Chris Braswell this year. That's a big loss. Right. And they're going to step up. You know, right. I that, Saban that, left the cabinet full. Right. Yeah. He left. The, it's not like, um, uh, DeBoer walked on campus with a uh, with a disaster on his hands. You know, uh, we still had a bunch of five star recruits uh, uh, sitting there in the practice room, in the film room. You know, uh, but it, yeah, it's next man up, and who's going to be the next man? You know, the competition's fast and furious here. Uh, uh, you know, we're we're going into the sixth practice now, and I think we only have what twenty four. Yeah. That right? mm-hmm. So, I mean, uh, we're a quarter of a way through now. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, we'll keep an eye on it. You know, obviously it's exciting every day that Alabama gets on the football field and you always want those guys to uh, just continue to get closer and closer to uh, getting ready for the season to start. You want them to stay healthy. Uh, It sounds like there's a lot of motivation around this program right now, but also a guy's having a good time, and I don't think that's a bad thing. Now, one guy that Alabama has targeted – is Khalid Lockett, the wide receiver, the five-star wide receiver out of Texas. He's set to make his decision today, Brett. Uh, I'm going to tell you that he's going to Texas from what I have kind of been told, but we'll see, man. Anything can happen. Um, It's between Alabama, Texas, Texas A&M, and LSU, and some other schools I think are in there too, but everyone kind of felt like it was a a, a dog fight between Alabama and Texas. Yeah. Number three, uh, wide receiver in the nation. And yeah, I think it, uh, Florida state's in the mix there too, but really it's down to Alabama and Texas. Uh, but like, like you mentioned, I, I mean, he's a Texas guy. Uh, a lot of folks think he's going to end up with the Longhorns. We'll see today. Who knows? Maybe we can pick up a huge surprise today. That'd be a, a nice one today. Mm-hmm. Well, Texas is recruiting hasn't been great. I mean, they're right, yeah. you know, kind of midway through the top 25. You would expect them to be in the upper echelons of recruiting. You know, maybe it's because they've kind of been, you know, looking at guys like this 
um, that they feel like they have a chance to get, and maybe they land him today. But I would love to see Alabama pull in another wide receiver, although I think they're good in that spot. You could always take a, a, another game changer like Lockett, and you know, and we'll see what happens there. All right, a couple things I want to tell you guys before Brett takes over the show. That first off, we're uh, brought to you by Pearl River Resort. I'm going to talk more about them in a second, but I want to remind you guys that the signed Daniel Moore calendars right now are available, and they're available to you with purchase at newlifeart.com. If you use our promo code Bama Tailgate. You get the you get it uh, signed. So he'll autograph it. So it'll be hand signed by Daniel Moore um, as this promotion goes on. So I mean, you got to uh, we're going to do it for the rest of this week. So if you want one of these, it's it's fantastic calendar. It's the 2025 Fine Art Edition, Crimson and White. It's all about Nick Saban. It's uh, a calendar full of those great Nick Saban moments. We all love Coach Saban. And then you can see on the side there, Daniel Moore will actually autograph it for you. So uh, it'll be a keepsake and, um, you know, you'll be able to, uh, you know, to to put that, frame it up in your house and uh, have it for you. Uh, with that said, let's talk about Pearl River Resort and everything that they bring to the table. Uh, Pearl River is a great partner to the show. You guys know that they're located in philadelphia mississippi it's like a you know hour and a half or less drive from tuscaloosa two hours and change from birmingham but they got the golden moon casino timeout sports lounge which you can go in there and gamble legally like out in vegas if you put fifty dollars on games there you can play dancing rabbit golf course you don't even need a membership it's the augusta that you can play it's that good of a golf course really a great course for just forty dollars so take advantage of that awesome clubhouse. Geyser Falls is their water park. That is uh, a place where you put the family. Maybe you want to go out there and do some swimming. You got the spa. And then you got all the great restaurants inside Pearl River and Silver Star. So take advantage of that. We appreciate them. When we come back, Brett takes over. Yes, indeed. It is the seventh day of August. Let's take a look at uh, the celebrity birthdays for today. Um, let's see. Uh, actor John Glover from Smallville is 80 today. Uh, never uh, watched that one. Never watched that one. Never watched it. Uh, you remember uh, country singer Rodney Cr uh, Crowell? Yeah, I do. He I don't remember what song he sings. What? 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 Do you remember his songs? I can't remember, but he, but he was a. Uh, it was a great. Kind of like an outlaw artist, 74 today. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, I'm looking at him right now. Yeah, he does. He does look like an outlaw. He, does he look like an outlaw? Okay, yeah. that's what I figured. Uh, Raul Malo of the Mavericks. They're a, a country band that really, you know, they they had a couple really big hits and they kind of just went off into the sunset. They're uh, he's 59 today. Okay. Um, these are all duds. Yeah, these are all duds. I'm sorry, <laughs> man. I, you know, it's not, not big names every day. Here's a babe alert, though. Charlie Saron is 49 today. Okay. All right. 
Uh, so anyway, yeah, Dud's on the birthday, but you know that's uh, that's okay. If you're looking for something to celebrate, today is National Lighthouse Day. Well, I like lighthouses. You know, I collect license plates, and I've got uh, a couple that have lighthouses on them. I've never actually been in a lighthouse, but the one that's near Sand Island, I always think about like how I just want to pull up to it and go inside there and see what's in it. Uh, this day in history. <laughs> what? You've never thought about going in a lighthouse before? Um, My friend's mom used to collect lighthouse, like miniature lighthouses. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people like the lighthouses. They like to, to you know, uh, I, I'm not climbing up there and then looking around. I mean, it's just like, well, what, you know. Um, you know there's got to be some really scary animals in that lighthouse. Yeah, I, I'm just not, you know. You know I, I take them or leave them. I don't, I, you know, I don't care. Uh, what, what's even better though is 1882. The Hatfield and McCoy feud erupts along the Kentucky West Virginia border. Have you ever uh, seen that documentary on like the History Channel on the Hatfield and McCoy feud? Mm-mm, but I went to the dinner show in Pigeon Forge. Yeah, probably not the same as the History Channel. <laughs> the today. fried chicken was pretty good. You like fried was it, was chicken really? and mashed potatoes? <laughs> yeah, really, really with mashed potatoes, good cornbread. It's home style. It's, yeah, it's home style cooking too. Like they just yeah, bring I, it I out. It probably it probably have that Kentucky West Virginia vibe. <laughs> did, they, did they serve any beans? <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah. Um, Nineteen thirty-five. A guy that means so much to our history that we don't even know about. Seattle high school teacher Ralph Upton dies. Is he the guy? Well, let me ask you this before you answer. Is this the guy that was um that they made the TV show about? Like he was a chemistry guy, and then he kind of, you know, decided he was gonna make some extra coin and he started to like make the best best meth that anyone's ever had. Like it was like perfectly like, like, and then he kind of got rich doing that, but then had cancer and then he ended up getting killed, like shot at the end and left a bunch of money. You're you're warm, but uh, actually no, he was someone else. Eisenberg was he, did he go by Eisenberg? No, no, he did not. (laughs) Okay. 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 Uh, He's a guy that invented the phrase stop, Look and listen. <laughs> to, to used to, used yeah. to teach kids how to cross the streets and railroad tracks. Even though your story is pretty good, uh, this guy was, um, you know, uh, he's he's a guy that I didn't even know about it until right now. But, I, you know, you still teach kids today. Stop, look, listen. I'm going to start using that on my son because I remember as a kid, but I haven't heard that in so long. Have you the other the, no, and the other one is if you ever catch yourself on fire, Brett, you stop, drop, and roll. That's right. You stop, drop, and roll. Right. Stop, stop look, and, and listen. Roll. Stop, drop, and roll. Have you ever uh, caught yourself on fire before? No, uh, never caught myself on fire before. Came close. So I was stomping out a little bit of a uh, fire that got out of hand. Uh, burned the bottom of my shoe. Uh, kind of melted it off, but. Uh, uh, no, uh, one time my dad set the yard on fire by accident. I caught that. Um, one time I set uh, the neighbor's yard on fire with fireworks. Um, uh, as a child, the fire truck had to come. It, uh, I thought it was a dud, but no, it went off right next to their house. And then, you know, about 15 minutes later, we look and we say, wow, there's a fire going on over there. Well, that was me. Um, but, um, uh, not a pyro or anything. I'm just saying I've had, I've had my run-ins with the uh, fire. Yeah. Okay. You ever caught yourself on fire? No, uh, well, I was filming a Pepsi commercial one time and my hair yeah, caught on that fire. That was your hair? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was your hair on fire? Like, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, that was my, actually Michael Jackson. But, but yeah, you say you haven't heard that phrase since, uh, since uh, you as a kid, but actually I used it when we were in Vegas a couple times and you just went <laughs> weren't listening to me. And that's because you were about 30 feet in front of me because I can't catch up with you. I walk you fast. too damn fast. I walk very fast. I was like, Mick, stop looking, listen. <laughs> he almost got hit by a truck. I was listening to the dead. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. What else? I was here? looking at the spear, the S7 spear. Yeah. 2005. Um, Dan Marino and Steve Young, two legends inducted into the NFL Hall of Fame. 
Yeah, I was on the next round. Maybe some of you guys saw that. And one of the questions was the best athlete that didn't win a championship. And uh, and and look, I picked Charles Barkley, but I got to tell you, Dan Marino right up there, man. What a great quarterback. He He's – honestly, I think of the guys that didn't win Super Bowls in the NFL that were great quarterbacks, he's, to me, the best. That's a look at this day in history. All right, guys. Well, thanks for hanging out with us. Roll Tide, everybody. We'll keep an eye on practice, and we will talk to you guys again soon. 